everyone. I hope you're having a great day today. Today, I'm here to talk about an issue that needs a little bit of attention to it. Well, I'm exaggerating a bit, a lot more attention to it. I come from India, the world's second most populated country and third most polluted country. I visited India when I was in seventh grade, and during my time there, I saw beautiful waterfalls and breathtaking landscapes along with the busy city side. There were so many wonderful things to look forward to every day, and every day was a different experience for me. Simple things like riding an auto rickshaw, going clothes shopping, or hanging my clothes on a clothesline were fun and exciting to me. But there was something that caught my attention, not the food, people, or clothes, a worldwide issue that's affecting more than 90% of us today, pollution. Pollution is attacking every corner of the globe at this very moment. Most of us are already aware about this issue, but I'd, I'd like to ask you to think about this in a bit different way. Instead of looking at it as a big problem, try to break it up into small pieces and work at it one step at a time. It may seem like a scary issue, but with consistent efforts toward it, it will definitely plateau and decrease. Today, I'm going to be talking about three different types of pollution, air, water, and land pollution. All three of these are interconnected, which means if we do our efforts to stop one, it can help stop another. 99% of the world breathes unclean air, according to the WHO. Those who are living in poverty are facing the most extreme air quality conditions. Some of the main causes of air pollution are fossil fuels and the burning of plastics. We can get short-term effects by being exposed to this pollution, such as difficulty breathing, coughing, and it may lead to longer-term effects like respiratory issues and cardiovascular issues. Let's not forget that the animals and plants that we live with also are experiencing the same difficulties. Some delicate plants aren't able to handle the toxicity in the air. Nine billion dollars worth of corn and soybeans was lost in the U.S. due to a type of pollution called ozone pollution. Ozone pollution is where the nitrogen in the air mixes with the organic compounds and creates toxic air all around the plants that makes it super hard for them to grow. When animals breathe in polluted air, it seeps into their tissues and weakens their immune system. Some parts of the world are facing immense amounts of air pollution, mainly due to a practice known as crop stubble burning. Crop stubble burning is where farmers burn their old crops in order to make room for their new plantations. They do this since they don't have a financially better option to tackle this, and there's only 10 to 15 days next before the next plantation starts, and there's limited amount of time. This may seem like a time-efficient idea, but it's not the best way to go about it. Burning these crops emits harmful gases like carbon monoxide and methane, all of which can lead to respiratory effects. Some safer alternatives include composting and taking the stubble to a power plant in order to make electricity out of it. 80% of the world's wastewater is dumped into the environment, which pollutes various water bodies. When we come into contact with this water, we may get diseases like typhoid and cholera. Marine animals can get strangled in plastic pollution, and fertilizer runoff can cause harmful algal blooms in the atmosphere. In some places of the world, this issue has taken a great extremity. For example, in North India, there are some toxic foam clouds floating on the river. These clouds are not a natural spectacle, but a man-made disaster. Some companies, like denim and dyeing companies, have been dumping their wastewater, which is chock full of phosphorus, into this river. And that phosphorus combines with the decomposting vegetation of the river to make the, the frothy clouds that we see today. Many devotees come to this river in order to make rituals, and they don't know the dangers of the river. When you come into contact with these clouds, short-term effects may persist, like skin irritation, and it may lead to longer-term effects, like neurological impacts. So when we think of pollution, the, our brains automatically go to the pollution in the air and the water, but it's also important to take into account that land is affected too. In fact, more than 75% of the world's land is degraded due to land pollution. 
Many of the land pollution causes are man-made, like littering and improper waste treatment. Some of land pollution's effects can include skin cancer and neurological impacts. When children eat food grown in polluted soil, their cognitive abilities can be impaired. In some places around the world, people are being forced to live on landfills or near landfills since the population is increasing and the waste that they're output, outputting is also increasing and they have nowhere else to live. A chemical called polychlorinated biphenyl is present in the soils of many big cities. And this chemical is especially dangerous because if we eat food that's grown in soil with polychlorinated biphenyl, we may experience immune system disorders and cancer. Pollution may seem like a scary issue, but if we work constantly against it, we can definitely win against it. When we are given this, the thought of how do we tackle this problem, we're faced with one of the two options. We can find a temporary solution or pinpoint the source and tackle it that way. Some of us decided to pinpoint the source. And there was an interesting approach taken by a nonprofit organization called Ocean Hero, who partnered up with another nonprofit organization called Plastic Bank to make a browser that where every five searches a person makes, one plastic bottle can be saved from the ocean. Pretty cool, right? Another person named Angad Dariani, a 23-year-old entrepreneur with an electrical engineering background, made a device that extracts carbon from the air and converts it into carbon tiles used to decorate kitchens and restaurants. These are all some pretty cool ideas. Others have decided to ignore the problem and just accommodate for it. Some car companies have faked their emissions test in order to make their products seem more reliable and interesting. Some fast fashion companies have been using a practice called greenwashing, which is where they use catchy slogans like 100% natural, fully reusable, in order to clickbait and catch us on. Usually, they don't have any evidence to back up their claims. We may not be huge influencers, avid protesters, or big companies, but we are all still in this problem. Alone, we may be a drop of water, but together, we are an ocean. Little efforts in the long run can make a big solution. It just takes the willingness to start. Just like writing an email or a story or even a book, it just takes one action, one thought to get the ball rolling. And once it's rolling, it's bound to achieve greatness. We can all do this by taking a small activity like switching out your plastic bags for reusable ones or making your own toothpaste and try to continue it for a longer period of time like one week, two weeks, two months, a year. Once you've got that down, try to take on another goal, like, I don't know, something else, like not trying to emit lots of waste into the landfills, try to recycle more. This may seem like a scary problem, but we can do this. We are all in this battle together, and we can definitely make our voices heard. A Greek philosopher, Plato, once said, starting is half the battle. It's not too late to start. We, we've still got the time. If we start now, we can definitely make it work. But all it just takes is one action, one thought, one word to be halfway between the battle against humanity and the planet. Thank you.